Right, okay, so welcome to probably my most requested video of all time. Now you've probably seen a lot of guides out there on how to speed up your Android phone, but I wanted to do something a little bit different. So we'll start the video off with some basic tips that you might have seen elsewhere, and then we'll get on to the really interesting stuff that you probably haven't. So we'll start by quickly recapping all the basic stuff on how to speed up your Android phone. And if you have any questions about detailed specifics, then leave them in the comments below. So to start with, you can use developer options to speed up the transitions on your Android device. You can turn them from 1 times to 0.5 times. Make sure your phone is fully updated all the time, new updates being not only stability but also performance. Uninstall all the apps you don't use because you'd be surprised how many of them leech CPU in the background. And on top of that, widgets, they basically run all the time, so if you're not using them, just get rid of them. Also, try and grab a third-party launcher like Nova. They tend to be not only more customizable, but also faster. Right, so let's get on to the juicy stuff. And the first section is SD cards. So it's kind of a bit of a re-emergence recently. Smartphones are starting to introduce them again. But you've got to make sure that the SD card in your phone, it keeps up with the main storage. Phones have very fast inbuilt storage, but as soon as you put a slower SD card in, you're starting to bottleneck your performance. So use an application called A1SD. And what it'll do is test the read and write speed of your external SD card, and you can compare that to your internal. And if it's significantly slower, then you could improve your performance by switching. Next up is Auto Sync, and you'd be surprised how much difference this makes. A lot of social media apps, they're constantly refreshing in the background, literally every couple of seconds, and each of these processes can take up to 3-5% to of your CPU power. So if you actually disable Auto Sync, then whilst applications will only refresh when you open them, that means that you have probably up to 20% more CPU headroom. Now the next one is cleaning the cache, and this might sound obvious, but a lot of guides tell you it wrong. They tell you that every week or so you should clean that out, and that's a bad idea, because it actually helps your applications perform better. The reason that you should delete it though, even maybe once a year or something, is just that there's a lot of applications which you deleted, but they've actually created storage, created files on your phone, which sometimes are even active when the application is gone. So the next one might sound quite obvious, but you'd be amazed how many Android users overlook it. And what you need to do is to make sure that for optimal performance, you keep at least 20% of your storage free. Without realizing it, a lot of applications that you use, they're actually constantly writing things to your drive. They're writing, removing, writing, removing, and you really need to optimize that process. So go through your music, go through your photos, go through your applications, just delete as much as you can, everything you don't need or want. And the last thing, if all else fails, is to factory reset your phone. Over time, whilst Android devices aren't as bad as Windows PCs, they do start to fragment. Applications leave a lot of files residue. Sometimes files corrupt and that slows down the phone. And the factory reset can literally let you start again from base zero. So guys, that was the video. I really hope you enjoyed it and you found it useful. I tried to make it a little bit different than current guides. I didn't want to keep telling you the same things you've already been told. If you did enjoy the video, a like would go a really long way. It takes me ages to make this stuff. And with that being said, I'm Mr. Who's a Boss, and I'm signing out.